It's Eric from the CGR Underwater Base, and I wonder, my fellow gamers, do you remember the excellent Super Star Wars series for the Super NES back in the Dizay? It was a fantastic side-scrolling adventure that is popular to this day, where you controlled Luke Skywalker and other notable characters in episodes 4 through 6. It was difficult to say the least, but I still consider it one of the best platformer series I've ever played. Well, flash forward to the turn of the millennium, and LucasArts is desperately trying to push their case for that all-too-imperfect resurrection of the Star Wars series, starting with Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Their desperation is reflected in Star Wars Episode 1, Jedi Power Battles, developed and published by LucasArts for the PlayStation. And another thank you to David in Ohio for his donation to the CGR Studios. Now this is not to say that in this new age of gaming that LucasArts produces bad games, not at all. But man, when you have to push a film as gimmicky as Episode 1, you have to imagine that there are going to be some games that would do better as well, Bantha fodder. It's the prequel days of Star Wars, and if you didn't fall asleep halfway through the film, you remember that in The Phantom Menace, Obi-Wan was a Padawan, Qui-Gon Jinn was his master, and Mace Windu was the baddest mother with a late saber in the galaxy. Yes, Samuel Jackson's appearance was definitely the saving grace, which is why I chose him out of the five Jedi you can choose in the game. You will battle through 10 levels of easy to kill enemy droids, that is, if you aren't bored to tears halfway through the game. The beat em up basis of this game is a good idea, especially towards fans of the genre like me, but it is instantly ruined by, first of all, the terrible movement controls, which make it impossible to immediately switch direction unless you stop running. Poor platform design that will have you keep falling to your death at the same point five times in a row, and worst of all, no autosave. This is one of the essential attributes to any successful next-gen platformer or adventure game, so that you don't have to repeat your actions like a broken record. The only bit of fun I had with Jedi Power Battles was the ability to lock onto your opponent with R1, and being able to use force powers, but even then, I found it silly that you could only use them at a certain time, which I frankly still don't understand. Poorly thought out game design like that of Jedi Power Battles just makes you want to move on to the next game in the bargain bin and leave it for the little kid who thinks that episodes 1 through 3 are like so much better than the old fogey 4 through 6. Sigh. There they are. Get them. 